Well, that's right, you guessed it. We are talking about famous people, is that backwards? Sorry, it ba it's probably showing up backwards, but it says famous people with ADHD, I swear. Hello friends, like I shared in my last video, I have ADHD. And thank you for those of you who responded to my video and welcomed me to the ADHD family. It was cool to see how many people actually have ADHD that I was already friends with or that I knew and I just had no idea about. I mentioned this a lot in my last video, but when I found out I had ADHD, well, when I found out I had ADHD, I had so many different emotions going through my head. On one hand, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like all the puzzle pieces were coming together and all the struggles in my life kind of started to make sense. And on the other hand, I was actually pretty overwhelmed. Um, just through doing a little bit of research and seeing people's stories on the internet, it seemed like a large majority of people had really awful experiences having ADHD. And it kind of just felt like it was this whole world of hopelessness. And it was really sad because there was like a bunch of stories of all these great people that probably had brilliant minds um, that just didn't function in a modern workplace. And there's story after story after story. Um, and so I kind of was feeling a little hopelessness, just feeling like I needed some sort of success story or any sort of grain of hope that there's someone ever <laughs> that had ADHD um, that became somewhat successful or that be or that was able to create a great life for themselves. Anyway, so what did I do? I searched the internet to see who else has ADHD so you don't have to. And I was actually kind of shocked by the lineup. All these great people that I've looked up to for a number of years or that I've just really respected, uh, that just shocked me that they had ADHD. We're talking some of the greatest inventors of all time. We're talking great actors, musicians, business people, incredible athletes. Um, so I'm excited to get into it. The first category we're gonna hit is inventors with ADHD. So the first one up to bat is Leonardo. So the first one up to bat is Leonardo. Whoa. So the first one up to bat is Leonardo. Leonardo. Leo. Leo. Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci. And I don't think I really need to explain of who Leonardo da Vinci was, but I will. He's one of the greatest inventors of all time. He created things like a flying machine, kind of something similar to a helicopter looking of thing, a glider, you think about the squirrel suit things, and a tank, I guess. I didn't even, I didn't know about this one, but I guess he designed a tank 400 years before a tank was ever even a thought in someone's mind. Um, so that's crazy. And besides just being a great inventor, he was also an incredible painter. And you've for sure seen some of his stuff. Paintings like the Mona Lisa, the lady who we're not sure if she's smiling or not, uh, the Last Supper and the Virtue in the Ver Virtuvian Virtuvian Man. I honestly just copy and paste that one. When I was writing this, I didn't even try to sound it out, but I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But this is what the picture looks like. Anyways, so it's obviously been hundreds of years since Leonardo da Vinci um, was even alive, and so how can we know that he had ADHD? And it kind of goes a lot more into his inability to finish projects. He started a ton of projects, completed some but he had just a total variety of projects and a lot of incompleted projects. Um, and so obviously that reminds me of myself. And if you're someone with ADHD, you know exactly what that's like. You start an exciting project and before you finish it, your mind has moved on to a more exciting project. So you leave the old one in the dust and start the new one. Okay, I'll try and move a little bit quicker, but the next person is Alexander Graham Bell. That's right, he invented a little thing called the telephone. So if you're someone who's always distracted on your phone, you can thank a fellow ADHD guy. Again, it's been quite a while since he's grown up, so he was never officially diagnosed because that did not exist back then. But experts conclude that because of his work ethic and also because of how poorly he was able to concentrate and work in school, um, a lot of the things that they tie together, they've come to the conclusion that they believe that he had ADHD. <clears throat> These glasses are so you will take me seriously. But something I have to note before I move on is ADHD wasn't actually discovered until the early 1900s. And it wasn't even diagnosed or had a name until about the 1960s and 70s. So ADHD is still a relatively recent discovery. So all these people that we're talking about that have been dead for quite a while now, um, all these things are based on research that experts have done, looking at their writings, looking at their projects, workflow, looking at their friends and relatives and what they said about them, and based off all those things, coming to the conclusion that they think that they had ADHD. So in case you're wondering, I just wanna make sure I get specific about that, just so there's no confusion. And so again, I'm not an expert on this. These are just things that I found from people who are much smarter than me and have done much more work to look at these things and find these things out. So, moving on. Next up on our list, we have America's pride and joy, Thomas Edison. So this boy invented the light bulb. Kind of a big deal, beginning stages of electricity. That's how we're able to see, obviously, 
I don't need to explain that. So Thomas Edison was someone who also struggled in school and friends and people closest to him always said that he felt distracted and kind of in his own world. Again, does that ring a bell or what? Okay, so next up on our list is Albert Einstein, the guy with the poofy, crazy hair. So kind of similar to Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein um, was super intelligent, but also super distracted. Uh, he struggled in school, um, but he was also very disorganized and impulsive. Again, I know I can't like diagnose people, but come on. Uh, the next one is Walt Disney. I honestly feel like I don't need to go too in depth with this one. Changed the future of movies, cartoons, cinema, amusement parks is still being frozen, so I hear. And so I didn't know this actually before I was looking into this, but I guess Walt Disney dropped out of school when he was 16 years old. But again, I think part of it was his inability to fit in or focus in school. Obviously, he found a different direction and had great success with it. That's probably gonna be our longest category because I was really fascinated um, about a little bit of their lives and what they did, because I think that's incredible. Again, especially someone who has ADHD, it was really amazing to see these people that all these inventions and all these things that they did required a ton of hard work, focus, dedication, consistency, which is something that uh, people with ADHD, I know that's kind of the stigma around it, sometimes the reality of it's hard to focus and stick with one thing and be consistent with it. So it was really cool to see these people uh, find ways to either overcome that or find ways to become so passionate in what they're doing that their ADHD, I think, ha actually helps them along the way of that. Anyways, enough blabbering. Uh, the next category is actors. I'm not gonna go into actors as much detail. Um, I don't have as much interest in their lives, quite frankly. And I think you'd probably recognize them and you can kind of get the gist of it. Um, but they are Ryan Gosling, who my wife Mia has a huge crush on and I will never live up to it, Will Smith, and Jim Carrey. I think there are more celebrities uh, that it listed. Um, these are just the ones that kind of stuck out to me that I thought were kind of cool. Acting is still something that, again, requires a lot of dedication, a lot of focus, um, a lot of passion, and so I think it's cool to see, and I've even read a, a few things mentioning how ADHD has helped them have a lot more drive, passion, and kind of get outside of the box creatively. Okay, moving on to our next category, musicians. Okay, here again, I'm not gonna go, again, intricate into these people's lives, uh, but I think this one I take probably a little bit more inspiration from um, because I obviously make videos, uh, a lot of freelance work, and I'm always fascinated by the way that musicians work, how they're able to produce their music, all the work that goes into that, the lyricism, everything like that I think is fascinating. And so these people are, number one, Adam Levine from Maroon 5, John Lennon, whoever the hell that guy is, Will I Am, and Joe Perry and Steven Tyler, who I think my dad will be excited to hear about. Um, and then also lastly, this one's not confirmed. This is a total bias. I'm putting this on here because he is my favorite musician, but John Bellion. He hints about it in one of his songs. I put it on there because selfishly, I'm just hoping that he is. Okay, so the last category I wanna cover is athletes. Honestly, a lot of these people weren't a huge surprise to me, um, just because I think given so much energy and how, mu how much activeness comes from people with ADHD, and obviously sports seem to be a really good way to release that energy. But without further ado, the first one I wanna mention is Simone Biles. I actually didn't, I'm not super into gymnastics, so I didn't actually know who she was. She's America's most decorated gymnast and has just won a stupid amount of medals and awards and broken records. If you're into the Olympics at all, or if you're into gymnastics, I'm sure you know who she is. The next person is Tim Howard. Depending if you're a soccer fan or not, you may or may not know who Tim Howard is, uh, but he's known as one of the greatest goalies of all time, especially one of the greatest American goalies. That's as much as I can say about that. I wish I knew a little bit more about soccer. Okay, this one was kind of surprising to me, but really cool. Uh, and it is Michael Jordan, which that one kind of blew me away. Um, obviously, arguably one of the greatest players to ever play basketball. I mean, come on, this guy played basketball, transitioned to baseball, and was on Space Jams. I don't. Where do you go from there? And the last one to mention on this list is Michael Phelps. I don't know much about swimming, so I'm not even gonna pretend like I know, but obviously he's the most decorated swimmer of all time, uh, greatest Olympic swimmer ever. And that concludes all the people that I was able to find. This was actually a really cool thing for me to go um, and read about all these people. I was really feeling pretty hopeless and just kind of feeling desperate to find anyone who was able to create a life within having ADHD and be successful in the world, or at least find some sort of happiness, regularity, or do something extraordinary. Um, I've been so, so hard on myself for so many years, um, comparing myself with my friends, um, academically, always getting lower grades than they have, feeling like I was never able to focus academically or in school, and always just kind of comparing myself to how my friends were, which 
seemed fully functional in every way. And I just felt totally like a, a black sheep, like there was something wrong with me that I was just super unintelligent. So finding I had ADHD and also seeing people that have had a lot of similar experiences that I've had growing up, it was really cool to see that these people were able to create a life that was successful for them. And that's the story since finding out that I have ADHD that I've been trying to change within myself. I'm, f I'm so tired of comparing myself to uh, family, friends, uh, people that I look up to. And I'm working on changing my story that having ADHD is a huge advantage for me. Obviously that I've seen from looking at all these people, I think because they had ADHD, they were able to do all these incredible things. I really do think that. And so honestly, this was my whole intention with making this video. If you are someone with ADHD and you felt similar ways before of hopelessness or feeling like you're just doomed for a life of struggle, I wanted to make this to prove to myself and also anyone else who has felt hopelessness or maybe is currently feeling hopelessness within even a professional sense, um, that all these people, because they were different, were able to do incredible things. Hey guys, I just had one last thought as I was editing this video. I think one of the reasons that a lot of these people were so successful in what they were doing is because they were doing something they were passionate about. And I think that's something I'm gonna make in a future video, talk a little bit more about, is the extreme benefits of doing something that you're actually passionate about, something that fuels you creatively and pushes you in that sort of way. I think that's a huge reason for a lot of these people's success and why they were so motivated to do what they were doing. Anyways, I'll probably touch on that in a further video, but just had to say that. And next week I'll be posting a video about my experiences on Adderall. I just started my medications yesterday and I'm gonna be recording my experiences all throughout the week. Um, so in the next video, I, I'll be able to share my experiences with that. If you're someone who's on the fence with it or who's already had experience with that, uh, please consider subscribing so you can see that video. But thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate you watching this and I hope you have an amazing day.